Hey guys, time to look at another dinosaur playset from Marx. This is the Prehistoric Times number 3388, even though it doesn't have the number on the box, which is really rare for Marx. But that's, uh, that's what's going on here. Uh, this, uh, this set came out, now according to some sources, it actually came out in 58, and other sources say that it did not come out until 1959. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go with 59 in this case, uh, because uh, this is one of the first ones of this type. These are called the square box sets. And I did a video on my other square box set, which is Mark's Prehistoric Times number 3394. And I'm going to put a link to that in the description of this video if you guys want to check that out and compare the two or whatever. Also, this is going into my, my playlist for uh, dinosaur play sets. And uh, anybody into this stuff, uh, might enjoy checking out that whole playlist. I mean, it's getting pretty long and it's gonna get a whole lot longer because I've got a lot of toy dinosaurs to cover. Anyway, getting back to this, this set right here, uh, this, this 3388, I know it's a 3388 because of the information I've seen from various sources. Like I said, it does not tell that on the box. And the one reason I'm going with 1959 for, for this set is because of this, Magic Marxy. Now, this is like Marx's little uh, mascot. And I, according to the information I found, he did not come out until 1959. And uh, it's on the box right there. So I'm thinking that... Uh, you know, that right there puts it firmly in 1959. The long box sets came out in 57 and 58 and into 1960, actually. And these uh, toys were always for sale for longer, you know, than when they in initially came out for a few years, you know, until uh, stock got used up. Anyway, let's look at this cool box. Now, uh... Here we have, let me tilt the camera up so we can get a good look at this without it being on an angle. Now these are called the, the square box sets and some collectors call them the pizza box sets. I like square box better, but anyway, they, they all have uh, the same illustration on the front, you know, the long neck brontosaurus. The uh, distinctive logo here for prehistoric times, you've got a pot-bellied T-Rex back there. Looks like he's chewing on a platyosaurus. Trachodon, Triceratops, Stegosaurus. I don't know, that might be an Allosaurus back there and a uh, pterodactyl in the background. <laughs> they drew a pterodactyl, but they only have pteranodons in the Mark sets. That's, that's no big deal, I guess. And down here under the water, of course, we have the Chronosaurus. And the Marx Chronosaurus is shaped more like a plesiosaur. But be that as it may, I mean, it says Chronosaurus on it. So, yeah, according to Marx, that's a Chronosaurus. And we'll look at the rest of the box here. Okay, we got a big paper pull here. Now, these were decorated for retail sales and shipping boxes. So, these were also used in mail order sales, and they were uh, closed with these huge staples, and when you opened them up, you had to pull these things out, and you couldn't help but damage the box. There was just no way around it, and most people in those days didn't necessarily collect the way we do now, and so they weren't that uh, worried about condition of packaging the way we are these days. So you, ha you end up with boxes in various states of disrepair because of the way they were originally made and stapled. Anyway, uh, this, these, uh, these Marx boxes are tough. You know, they're, they're corrugated cardboard. 
they've held up all these years. And uh, there's some information on the side there. Uh, they always like to put their address. Lewis Marks and Company. And here's something interesting here. This is actually a price stamp. And you know, I've looked at that with magnifying glass, and it looks like uh, $3.77, maybe 97 cents. And you know, that was reasonable for this back in those days because uh, you could, the long box sets were $4 and change. Maybe five at that point. But uh, interesting the way you ran into different variations of this stuff and nothing really had been poured on the bottom of the box there. And that pretty much covers the box. Now I'm going to show you the contents. Okay, we've got our contents out on the table here. First of all, we'll take a look at the booklet. Now, I've shown this, these things before in other videos about Mark's dinosaur play sets, but I want to be thorough, so I'm going to go over it here. Uh, here is the booklet, the basic little booklet that uh, Mark's included in all of these, P56-1. This one's in pretty decent condition. It's got a little creasing there, but, you know, not a big deal. And uh, it's a little 16-page booklet that uh, goes over each animal with some illustrations. And a timeline in the middle. Age of Man at the end there. They gave you the what was understood as the science back then, and they included all this stuff, though, so that you could play with uh, cavemen with your dinosaurs, but there was no cavemen in this set. Now, the other square box set I have, the 3394, has a set of six cavemen, and I'm uh, basing that on the set that was gifted to me by my parents back in 1964. The square box set, I believe, I'm pretty sure it was a 3394. It must have been. It had six cavemen in it, and it was not a Montgomery Wards exclusive because we bought it at a hobby shop in Athens, Georgia. My parents did. So... There were some of them that had the cavemen. Most of them, this earlier version of the square box set, the 3388, did not have cavemen. Had 31 dinosaurs. Let's go over the terrain first. This terrain is nicely marbled, and it's kind of mixed. Three of the pieces are in the base brown, and that one, the lake piece, is more of in a gray mixed with brown. I mean, it's heavily marbled. But even these... Uh, other pieces are marbled. You can see the swirling there. And all of these were included in this set that I bought from an eBay seller. So I'm pretty sure these were original to the set, you know. It's not like a random person is going to have a huge cache of Mark's prehistoric times pieces to draw on. Take some nut like me to stockpile all that stuff, you know, to fill in gaps and things. But anyway, yeah, here's the small uh, mountain piece or rock ridge or whatever. It's got some nice marbling there. Marbled in uh, white and black. And uh, even this uh, flat rock piece has some, as you can see there, some marbling. Us collectors, we love that marbling. It makes each piece unique when it's marbled or swirled like that. And here is the lake piece, and this is heavily marbled. I've, I've never seen a terrain piece by Mark's marble this much, really. This is like the, the higher end of uh, swirling and marbling for Mark's terrain pieces. It's very cool. You know, those collectors love stuff like that. 
Okay, and we'll look at the trees real quick. Just standard assortment. You've got, uh, I believe the number for this is uh, the trunks is like PL761, I want to say. Maybe 760. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just what the marks designation is. Here's the big, tall, single trunk palm. Here is the large double trunk. And here is the small double trunk, and there are two of those. And then you've got four of the fern bases. All of these are in, you know, the light brown. Not quite tan, but light brown. And then you've got the standard assortment of the uh, palm tree leaves or fronds. There's the large one. And they've got the hole there, you know, that you uh, put down over the post on top of the the tree trunk. And you got the three uh, medium ones. And these are the same in, in all the Mark's play sets pretty much. In the 70s, they started going halvesies on them, but in, in the earlier original ones, they had this full assortment. It, it gave you, in essence, uh, four palm trees, three of them with double trunks, and enough uh, leaves to fill all those, and four ferns. Here's the, the little layered uh, fern piece, the small one. And then the ferns, you had uh, two three-leaf ferns, and they have little posts on them that uh, you put down in the hole of the base, and then two of the four-leaf ferns. There again, post you put down in the hole. Now we go to the large dinosaurs. There are 31 dinosaurs in, in all of these square box sets, 31. There are some variations by mold group and such, which I'll get into that in a minute. Here we have the large mold group in varying colors, which was common. Actually, this pot belly T-Rex. Here's the large mold group right here. Let me put these dudes together. You have the Brontosaurus. It's got the large mole circles on the feet. You can tell that's a large mole group Brontosaurus. You've got the Chronosaurus. This is a premium piece. It's a metallic silver Chronosaurus. The metallic green pieces were other, were other premium pieces that were even harder to find than the metallic silver, and they sell for more. But in these square box sets, there are no metallic green pieces. It's just metallic silver. And then the potbelly T-Rex, which is a sought-after piece. Because there are fewer Chronosaurus and potbelly T-Rex than any of the other Mark's dinos because they cut out use of this large mole group right after this set came out, like around 1960 or whatever, so or 61 or whatever. Now, this has two additional odd dinosaurs they were pushing this sleek T-Rex back then, and they put two additional ones outside of the mole group. These are revised mole group pieces. Instead of having the whole revised mole group in this set, they put an additional two sleek T-Rexes. And that's what my set had, the original one, when I was a kid in 1964 that I got for Christmas. It had uh, this assortment right here. And it had the two additional sleek T-Rexes. Okay, now there are two shots of the medium mole group, and the light green and the gray. Here's the Stegosaurus. And Kylosaurus. Pteranodon. And these, you know, have the names on them on the bottom there. Or on the tail. And uh, the Trachodon doesn't want to stand up well, so I'm using the Hedrosaurus to help hold him up, you know, his, his brother there. <laughs> this is the Hadrosaurus. He's, it's, it's like he's waving to people, you know. Saying, hey, man. I'm down here. He's got his head cocked there. He's got some personality, I guess. Kind of a weird little dude. 
here's the trachodon. And uh, he had problems standing up, so when they did the revised mold group, they did another trachodon that stands up a little bit better. I'll lean him back up there on his brother. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. Here's the Allosaurus. And then the uh, repeat of the medium mole group, that's PL750. The large mole group's PL749 for anybody that cares. And there's actually, the, you know, you got two shots in this set of the medium mole group, one shot of the large mole group, and two shots each of the small mole group. Uh, the small mole group had seven pieces in it, and they duplicated two of them. So there are five different dinosaurs in the small mole group, seven total. So basically, you know, you have uh, seven, seven, 14, 26, 29, and then the two odd ones make 31. I'll show you these small ones and then talk about the variations of contents. Uh, here's the Sinognathus. It's a, kind of a creepy looking little dude. Creepy and cute. Okay, here's the Triceratops. Yeah, this brown color was fairly was new at this point. So before that, they just had uh, the small mole groups in gray and green. Sometimes they were marbled, marble gray. That's a Spinacodon right there. He's a favorite. Two shots of the Platyosaurus. And two shots of the Dimetrodon in each small mole group. So in this particular set, you got uh, four Dimetrodons and four Platyosaurus. Okay, now that's one of the, the common contents arrays. In some of these sets, they had... Uh, the revised mole group instead of one of the extra medium mole groups. And they didn't have these two extra, the sleek T-Rex, because the sleek T-Rex was in the revised mole group. There are eight dinosaurs in the revised mole group. So when they swapped these out, you still had 31 dinos. In, in all of the combinations that you might find in one of these square box sets, there's always 31. Okay, that pretty much covers the contents, and I'm going to set that up for you now. Okay, here we go. It's all set up. All 31 of them. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't have cavemen to try to fit into it anyway, so... I got to make use of the cave for uh, some of the dinos, since the cavemen weren't here to take that up. But, uh, of course, the poor old Chronosaurus is kind of stuck there in the lake. And I'm going to take the camera and do what we do around these parts. You're going to get a pteranodon's eye view of what's going on. Now, basically, the big plot point here <laughs> is the conflict between sleek Tyrannosaurus rex and potbelly Tyrannosaurus rex. Yeah, these new dudes, these sleek Tyrannosaurus rex, are muscling in on the potbelly's territory. They kind of supplanted the potbelly T rex because uh, the large mole group took too damn long to run. So. Uh, Marx uh, did away with that mole group. No more potbelly T-Rex. He was just too fat. Took, took too long to do the molding cycle. So uh, these two uh, supplemental figures, the, the uh, sleek T-Rexes were included in this play set, and they're going to double team this potbelly here and take care of him. And most of these critters are just getting the heck out of here. You know, they don't want to be part of that. Except for that poor Trachodon right there. Because he's got two Allosaurus on his tail and he's being driven straight into this conflict right in the middle here. So that Trachodon is in a world of hurt. 
and the rest of these uh, dinos are just kind of hanging out, trying to get out of the line of fire, as it were, or area of carnage, more appropriately. And there's uh, one of the Hadrosaurus watching from the sidelines there. He's got a the seat at the 50-yard line for all the bloodletting. A couple of pteranodons up on the cave there. They'll take wing if things get too hot. And uh, there's a Dimetrodon sticking his head out of the cave. Going to watch the fight. A couple of platysaurs getting the heck out. Tronosaurus popped up to see what was going on. There's a Dimetrodon and another one and a Spinacodon. You know, those, those little dudes, they like to lay around near the water. And another Trachodon back there kind of hiding a little bit. That Brontosaurus is glad it's not getting chased for a change by T-Rex. And then you got some of these fringe things. Yeah, for once, in this setup, I avoided the trope of Triceratops versus T-Rex. Yeah, these trikes are just on the, you know, on the edges of the scene here, just uh, minding their own business for once. Not picking a fight with T-Rex or vice versa. So, there we go. That's pretty much it. Pteranodon's eye view of the proceedings. And we're going to take another quick look at the box with Magic Marksy there. Another great Magic Marksy toy from the world's largest toy maker. Yeah, if you want to see Black Magic Marksy, check out my uh, first couple of videos on the Haunted Graveyard playset. You know, I'm going to redo that those videos and because I was, those were the first ones I did, and they're they could be done a lot better. So, eventually, I'm going to get around to redoing those and making it more streamlined and uh, hopefully more entertaining. There was a lot of and does in there because I wasn't really used to trying to make a video. So, it was and ud to death. But anyway, I'm way off base here. Uh, getting way out in the left field. We're talking toy dinosaurs here. It ain't the haunted graveyard. It's the dinosaur graveyard for this video. And next video, I will probably do another toy dinosaur video. So stick around for that. A lot of dinoing to come. And like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm going to put a link in the description for my other square box set. The Marks Prehistoric Times, number 3394 from 1960. And you guys can, you know, compare and contrast and see how they're quite similar, but there were some differences in them. And also, this video is going into my playlist for dinosaur playsets. And anybody really into this stuff, you need to check out that playlist. Just go to my channel page. It's right there. And you can dino out. And speaking of dinoing out, this is the dinosaur graveyard. Out. <laughs>